Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be playing as Umbreon, probably one of, if not the best defender in the game currently with its unmatched, uh, what's the word, utility and defensive stats. I know I, I would probably say Lapras is a little bit more tanky than Umbreon and Blastoise does a lot more damage in general than Umbreon and Lapras, but Umbreon gives a nice mix between the two, especially if you go foul play Snarl, but the build that I prefer to run is always going to be Mean Look and Snarl. Snarl gives you the AoE damage, uh, it makes you unstoppable for a little bit of uh, CC resistance if you need it, as well as the stun, and the Mean Look is just a really good ability to end up kiting or helping your carries kite and or survive certain scenarios against the enemy team. As well as something that I found out recently, because I have not played Umbreon for very long, is that when you stand inside the Mean Look AoE with the enemy team, you get unlimited boosted auto attacks, and it, your boosted auto attacks do more damage than normal. So you just end up scrapping in the ring, and you just you do really good in a, a lot of 1v1s. You aren't necessarily going to win all of them, but it gives you a little bit more uh, standing power to just hit, sit there and scrap. So I am laning top lane with Pikachu and then the uh, Clefable and the Cinderace, I think, are bot side. And then we have the Miascador in the jungle. Pikachu and I are being pretty, pretty dominant in the top lane. As you can see, I already have all six stacks of my Aos cookie, which is really good. I managed to take at least one of the berries. I was so close to getting the second one, and this Dreepy is just getting absolutely demolished. He doesn't really get much out of their own farm. Dies again. I get n an another couple points. Uh, I help Pikachu take... Or, never mind. No, I do not. I... I so I'm going to be rotating mid with the Cinderace instead. I guess I was wrong. Cinderace is in the jungle. We kill the Mewtwo, which is really, really good. And then we rotate back topside to help our Pikachu out, as well as maybe secure a couple kills and secure some farm. We do get the mid-contested farm, and then I see that the enemy Umbreon is in the bush. So we, I set it up so my Cinderace can kill, and then we turn in again, and we do a really good overcap. Probably could have let it stay a little bit longer, but with the Reggie spawning soon, if we want pressure on top Reggie, it's always better to get rid of the top, uh, top plat as soon as possible. Now that does give them the option to farm their Audino, so it gives them a little bit of catch-up XP. Uh, especially since we're all rotating down bot side, so maybe we shouldn't have broken the top plat. Cinderace is a little bit low, as you can see. That's not too bad. The enemy Wartortle and Greninja are uh, spacing me out a little bit, which is fine. My team goes hard on this engage. We catch out the enemy Wartortle. He goes down. I do a massive ult on the back line, and the Cinderace and the Pikachu both throw in their spells at the same time, and they just get wiped. We break bottom plat. I did not see how much the overcap was. Uh, my team has that, so I'm just going to rotate topside as quickly as I possibly can to try and contest the Reggie Alecki, try to stop them. I don't know if I'll get there in time, but hopefully. I do not get there in time. I was really, really close, though. But my team does rotate right behind me, and we do get another kill, and we do kill this Mewtwo as well. Blastoise goes in full charge and just dies as well, which is really good on my team. We may not have gotten the Reggie Lucky, but the enemy team gets absolutely nothing off of it either. All they do is get the initial XP for taking Reggie Lucky. The Dragapult goes in for God knows why and proceeds to get destroyed as well. The enemy Greninja also goes in by himself and proceeds to get destroyed. And then the enemy Mewtwo also proceeds to go in and get destroyed as well. And then my team gets another big turn in. And we do not break the second tier top plat, although it is pretty close. Pikachu does use its Unite move, and my team goes a little bit too aggressive for my liking. We don't really want to fight here, but my team decides to stay in, so I stay with them, in my personal opinion. Uh, if your team is doing the wrong play, 
So, you, you, MOBAs are team games, right? Uh, in my opinion, even if you don't think the play is technically correct, more often than not, your team gets more for... So, like, let's say you want to do Reggie, the bottom Reggies, right? But your team wants to do top Reggies. It's better to go with your team in that certain instance to try to push your lead than it is to try to do something by yourself and possibly just die. That's not always the case. Obviously, there are so, a lot of instances where if your team is doing the wrong play, don't follow them. Like, if they're always just farming... Uh, sometimes it's good to apply a little bit of extra pressure, or if they're trying to back cap, it's not really a good idea to always do that. But So I go to top Reggie Lucky because it spawned and I want to help contest it. The enemy on Baron just solo ults me for who knows why, so now he doesn't have ult for the Reggie fight. The rest of my team is fighting in mid, our Cinderace does go down. I am beating this Umbreon because I have a nice level advantage. And then the... the Part of my team does show up. So now we're taking the Regilucky with pretty much no contestion whatsoever. Pikachu is waiting and zoning uh, a little bit further down. It looks like we're going to walk Regilucky up to the tier 2 plat. Or never mind, straight into the base. When did we break tier 2? Oh my goodness. This game is even more of a stomp than I realized. So... Uh, some people like to take Wish on Umbreon, and I do think Wish is a very good uh, good move. But I would only take it if there is another defender on the team, and since I'm the only defender, I want to be able to walk forward and apply pressure. We have a Clefable who is already applying heals, and I feel like my heals would just be a little bit wasted. Or maybe not as needed. So I went with Snarl instead. I'm just going to be farming a little bit. Trying to get more levels while my team is kind of doing a pointless fight in the bot lane. I stopped autoing right there specifically because I saw the Mewtwo Unite coming down and I didn't want him to steal it. So I'm going to be taking blue buff as well. Blue buff on any character is always really good. It just means your abilities come up that much faster. So if you ever see the opportunity to get a blue buff... Uh, I mean, if a carry is trying to take it and you're a support or a tank, I think letting them get it is the better idea more often than not. But if your team is not doing so hot or uh, you're the only one there to take it, I think taking it is fine. The only one I wouldn't take on most defenders and supports is red buff. Umbreon, you could kind of get, uh, you kind of get away with taking red buff if, you, especially if you do what I do, where you auto a lot. And you kind of just scrap. I know some people just use their abilities, go in, and then when their abilities are gone, they just leave. So a lot of the enemy team is kind of split, so we're just kind of burning this. Blastoise uses his ult a little bit too early, and we end up taking the Rayquaza because of it. Uh, Cinderace goes to score bot side, and the rest of my team runs down mid to score in the home base. So at this point, we're heavily in the lead. I mean, we we already were, but now we're extremely in the lead, and my team just wants to stay and keep scrapping. At this point, though, we should just uh, back off and defend the points, but if my team wants to stay... Uh, they kind of need me there to keep them alive, more or less. Like, if Clefable, Clefable and I left, our team could not stay here. I don't think we should be staying here regardless, though, because all it takes is one big team wipe at this point for them to just run down and get massive turn-ins and just catch up. So you could argue that this way you're just dominating more and there's no way for them to do anything. But all it takes is one little misstep from one of your teammates to uh, lose the entire match, especially at this point. Blastoise ults again, probably just because he knows that the match is over at this point. I apologize for all the yawning. I just woke up. So I like to run Slow Smoke on Umbreon as well. Uh, I don't usually run Slow Smoke on a lot of characters, but I like running it on Umbreon, and I like running it on 
Lapras, just because Lapras and Umbreon are really good at zone control and applying pressure in specific areas, and I think Slow Smoke just adds to that. Now, if uh, I know a lot of people like to run X speed, so it makes it a little bit less valuable. So we're going to look at the damage charts of this match as well, like you, like usual. I mean, not just damage, but tanking and healing stats too, obviously. So my team is a 1,000 point lead. Very, very solid. Pikachu gets MVP. And that's about it for this video. I thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, or night. And I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.